Imagine the perfect video store. It would have a great selection, right? Right! Over 10,000 videos. Three evening... 1976. The first VHS tape compatible VCR was released, but they wouldn't get popular until the 80s. The most movies were expensive to buy on VHS, and they ranged from $70 to $90. Even if you could afford them, you probably wouldn't want to waste $90 on a movie that you may or may not like. So most people would rent them from a video rental store, such as Hollywood Video, Family Video, Movie Gallery, Hastings, and Major Video. Though the most popular video rental store was Blockbuster Video. It was an icon of the 80s and 90s, and tons of people today are still huge fans of Blockbuster, including me. So I want to tell you the history of Blockbuster Video. First, let's talk about a guy named David Cook. David was trying to sell software to the oil and gas industries in Texas, but it wasn't very successful. David's wife, Sandy Cook, wanted to get into the video rental business. So David started studying the industry and eventually bought a video store in Dallas, Texas called Video Works. There were some problems, though. David wanted to decorate the interior blue and yellow. Video Works said no. So David left the Video Works franchise, and in 1985, he opened up his own video rental store in Dallas, Texas called Blockbuster Video. When the store first opened, it contained 8,000 VHS tapes and 2,000 Betamax tapes. Later in 1987, a guy named Wayne Heisinga wanted to get into the video rental business, so he acquired several Blockbuster Video stores, and he's the main reason Blockbuster expanded so fast. There was a new Blockbuster Video store being opened every 24 hours thanks to him. Though Wayne was worried about how new technology could threaten Blockbuster, such as video on demand and the growth of cable television. 1994, Wayne sold Blockbuster Video to Viacom for $8 billion. In 1996, the Blockbuster Video stores were renamed to just Blockbuster, and they slightly changed their logo. In my opinion, I prefer the old logo. Now let's talk a little bit about a guy named Reed Hastings. Reed rented a movie called Apollo 13 on VHS, and he had it for six weeks and was charged a $40 late fee. Reed decided to create his own company, and his company was called Netflix. Later in the year 2000, Reed offered to sell Netflix to Blockbuster Video for $50 million, but Blockbuster Video declined the deal. In the mid-2000s, Blockbuster Video teamed up with Enron to create a video on-demand service, but Enron later decided to cancel the deal. In 2004, Blockbuster Video was at its peak, at over 9,000 stores in the United States, and they planned on buying Hollywood Video, but they decided not to, and later in 2005, Movie Gallery bought Hollywood Video. Blockbuster Video almost bought Circuit City too, but they decided not to. Now let's talk a little bit about the death of Blockbuster Video. On July 1, 2010, Blockbuster Video was removed from the New York Stock Exchange. Things were getting worse for Blockbuster Video. On September 23, 2010, Blockbuster filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. This network bought Blockbuster Video for $500 million on April 6, 2011. In 2014, this network shut down all of their corporate-owned stores, but most of the franchise stores stayed open. Currently, there's only one Blockbuster video store remaining, and it's located in Bend, Oregon. The last store is a huge tourist attraction in Oregon, and it's actually very popular. The owner of the last Blockbuster plans on keeping the store opened. On August 5th, 2018, I created an online petition and Instagram account to make the last Blockbuster video a landmark. Currently, the petition has 1,419 signature. It's up to the owner if he wants to make it a landmark or not. In 2019, a lot of stuff has happened for Blockbuster. It made an appearance in the movie Captain Marvel. A website called freeblockbuster.org has created a Blockbuster newspaper type stand where you can take movies or donate movies. There's the music video about the last Blockbuster. A clothing store in Los Angeles has decorated their store and made it look like a mini Blockbuster. A documentary is currently being made about the last Blockbuster, and I continue to keep the magic of Blockbuster alive with my Instagram and YouTube account. Even though Blockbuster was annoying at some times with their late fees, and they made some stupid business decisions, you just have to remember the good memories of Blockbuster video. If you'd like to help support my Instagram account and YouTube channel, 
please check out my Blockbuster merch shop. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching.